Hello everyone and welcome back to my uh, channel. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the development of the female reproductive part that is the megaspores and megaspore mother cells. How the development of embryo sac is happening. So let us move ahead into this. You have seen this uh, structure in my previous video where I have talked about the structural composition of the ovule that which type of layers we can find and which type of structures we can find, right? So, in the uh, inner side view, you can see that this is the embryo sac. But from the very beginning, this embryo sac is not present. How this embryo sac is forming? Let us first see that, okay? So, firstly, if we'll see the inside view here, let me draw it first, that it is somewhat looking like this kind of a structure. There are several cells which are considered as the new cellars and inside this new cellar cell one cell is present there which is very big which is very big and rest of the cells are very small small cells are present there but one cell is present there particularly that is very big in size and that is having a very dense amount of cytoplasm in it so that cell is considered as megaspore mother cell, okay? So this cell is considered as megaspore mother cell or MMC. Outside this, there are the new cellars so that they can draw nutrition from these new cellars because new cellars is full of rich in uh, various kinds of nutrients, okay? So from this megaspore mother cells, the division will take place and that will lead to the formation of the megaspores. How that will lead to that? Just see. In the megaspore mother cell, there is 2n number of chromosome. What is the number of chromosome? That is 2n. So it is obvious that it needs to be further undergo my meiosis cell division so that it will lead to the production of haploid gametes because we know that in the gamete, until and unless there is the haploid number of chromosomes that is half number of chromosomes than the parental uh, progeny then it is never possible to do fertilization events so to do that we need to half the number of these that's why it will undergo meiosis cell division okay it will undergo meiosis cell division that will lead to formation of four cells so that will divide and give rise to this kind of four cells. So inside this structure, if we'll say that uh, in this kind of a structure, this whole thing was happening. These are the integuments and this is the opening of this. So we can say that this is the micropylar end and this end is known as the chalazar end, right? This end is considered as the chalazal end. So what will happen in this case and there are the nucellar cells outside. From the outside region there are the nucellar cells over there. So out of these four cells, out of these four megaspores, what will happen? There are now, there are the four megaspores. All of these are considered as megaspores. And all the megaspores are having half the number of chromosome of their parent cell. So from one megaspore mother cell, four megaspores are being produced. Now out of these four megaspores, only three, only one megaspore will remain functional and the rest of the three will be degenerated. Okay. Now which three megaspores will be degenerated? Only the one megaspore which is present at the chalazal end, near the chalazal end that will remain functional and rest of the megaspores that is which are present near the micropylar end these three megaspores will be degenerated these three will be degenerated so only one megaspore will remain functional and from this one megaspore formation of the embryo sac will be happened and as this is happening that is only uh, from one megaspore formation of the total embryo sac is happening that's why this type of development is called as monosporic development okay so this there is the topic that is monosporic development i hope that you understood that why is it considered as monosporic development that is nothing but 
formation of the embryo sac formation of the embryo sac from only one functional megaspore so in this way out of the four megaspore only one megaspore will remain functional now this megaspore will further show mitosis cell division in it so first in the first mitosis cell division what it will produce now let me draw this in little bit a bigger version so it will produce from one nucleus this will produce two nucleus and one interesting thing is that that right after the nucleus division there is no more division of the cytoplasm and there is no more formation of the cell wall cell membrane outside the nucleus that is why the nuclear the nucleus will remain in a free state okay now after doing this one mitosis for one time this is forming this type of two cells so right after the second mitosis that will be converted into four cells from one nucleus two nucleus so from two nucleus four nuclei stage will be happen and that will undergo further one mitosis which will lead to the formation of this kind of a structure so now can you see that there are eight nucleus present inside this structure so these eight nucleus will now rearrange themselves and surrounding these eight nucleus formation of the cell membrane will take place now let us see that what will happen to this structure of the embryo sac and how it will be converted into the mature embryo so if this is the sac like structure inside which there are the nucleus three nucleus will be there in one pole that is the micropylar end three more nucleus will remain into the another pole that is the chalazal end and these two nucleus will be present at the center this will be covered with this kind of sac like uh, this kind of membranes and as in our picture this side was the micropylar side and this side was the chalazal side so all the three cells which will be formed at the chalazal site will be considered as antipodal cell they do not take part in the fertilization event okay they will be degenerated according to time these two nucleus are considered as polar nuclei these two are considered as polar nuclei and within a very big chamber they are covered actually these are present within a very big this kind of a chamber and that is why this is considered as central cell the cell inside which these are present that is considered as central cell and the three uh, cells which are present in the micropylar site among those three cells in one cell we can find that nucleus is much bigger comparatively the nucleus is bigger and that is called as egg cell that is called as the egg cell and rest of the cells are called as synergids okay so these two cells are called as synergids and into the synergids there are this kind of finger like structures present those are considered as filiform apparatus those are considered as filiform apparatus okay so in this way several structures we can find in the embryo sac and this is the structure of the mature embryo sac so in this position can we see that there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 only seven cells are present but how many nucleus are present there eight nucleus are present into this structure so this structure is often considered as seven celled eight nucleate stage structure of the embryo sac and now this is completely ready for doing the rest of the events of fertilization so these uh, structural uh, configurations have to be made before fertilization event is happening that is the 
production of the megaspore from the megaspore mother cell is happening through the process that is considered as megasporogenesis okay so uh, i hope that uh, you understood the whole structure and whole procedure that how the cell division is taking place how the nuclear division is taking place and how from one functional megaspore this kind of cell is happening the total embryo sac is forming all right so in our next video we are going to talk about the fertilization and the post fertilization events here we are ending our pre fertilization changes in the female gametophytic structures so to see all of that video stay tuned to my channel and if you uh, found this video helpful then please do like share and subscribe to my channel thank you